Hello everybody, my name is Kirby. It is the first episode of year 2021. And the special ingredient that we have today is... This is a frozen oyster meat. Well, you don't see much of these oyster meats all around the market being sold in Western restaurants. And I'm just going to say this right now. Let's create the dish. Okay everybody, the special ingredient that we have today is this, frozen oyster meat. Just oyster meat all the way from China. Well then, introduction time. This is the oyster meat that you can actually see in the hawker centers where people actually use this oyster to make oyster omelette. In Japanese restaurants, you can actually see people use this to make kari tempura. Overall, in Malaysia, I can see that not much people actually have much ideas on what they can actually do with this. Only in Japanese restaurants and in the hawker centers where people make oyster omelette. So that is why I'm actually using this product as a topic today. Anyways, I think that I can actually make a lot of different dishes out of this. So I'm just going to give it a try and then you're going to see what's the outcome going to be like. Well then, now let's take a look at the dish, shall we? So the oyster here, the size is kind of like not that big, not that small either. It is said that each size of these oysters, one piece is about 9 grams to 11 grams. If the oyster is like really, really soft and defrosted in total, you can see that it's like totally mushy like that. I don't think there's much to say about the oyster because each of the oyster actually looks just about the same and has just about the same size. I've already seen oyster meat from Japan if I'm not wrong and the size of the oyster is much much bigger compared to this and if you ask me I've actually seen in the hawker centers where people actually use really smaller size oysters to make the oyster omelette so I think this is actually an average size and as much as I've actually defrosted the oyster you can actually see quite a number of juice coming out but I'm gonna strain off the juice anyways later so yeah so now I'm going to announce that I'm going to make three different dishes with this product the first dish is going to be the Japanese style cooking. I'm going to make it into a oyster chawanmushi. The second dish is going to be a western style. I'm going to make an oyster gratin. And the third dish, I'm going to use these oysters to make an oyster souffle. Kind of risky but yeah, a savory souffle. So to utilize the oyster, the first thing I'm going to have to do is to defrost and drain the oyster nicely. So putting the oyster on my strainer. This is what the oysters are like after it's defrosted. So now, I'm going to start making my oyster chawamushi. First, I'm going to start by boiling some dashi stock. Soy sauce, mirin, I'm going to add in prawn shells, and I'll leave this to boil for a while. So in a large bowl, I'm going to crack in two eggs. Whisk it and the stock that I had just now, I'm just going to pour it into the eggs. After that, I'll be straining the mixture so that the product becomes a little bit smooth. Now, I think I'm going to put approximately 3 pieces of oyster per chawamushi. So, 1, 2, 3. Okay, 4. One, two, three, four. I'm going to put in the egg mixture. After that, just close this up and we can put this into the steamer. So in it goes to the steamer. The steamer shouldn't be too hot or there will be a lot of bubbles coming out in the egg mixture. So you're going to steam this for about, I say 20 minutes and the eggs should be done. While waiting for the chawamushi to cook, I'm just going to cut out a little bit condiments for the chawamushi so that it looks a little bit nicer later. So, first I'm going to start with chives. Next, a crab stick. So I'm just going to cut it in a slanting way like this. And at last, mushrooms. Just have to remove the roots like that and that's all. Moment of truth, what's it like in the inside? Oh, really nice and smooth. I'm just going to add one tiger prawn here, a decorative crab meat, tiger prawn, crab meat, and a mushroom. I'm just going to close this back inside. 
So now I'm putting this back into the steamer for about, I'd say, 5 minutes. So now I'm going to start making my oyster souffle. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start by mixing 15 grams of plain flour. I'll be mixing this flour with about 5 grams of cornstarch. Next, I have a ramekin over here. It's an oven-proof ramekin. I'm going to take maybe approximately 15 grams of butter as well. I'm going to rub the butter all around the ramekin like this. So now the ramekin is kind of greased up already. So I'm going to use the flour mixture that I had just now. I'm going to put everything inside here, coat the whole ramekin with the flour mixture and toss the remaining back into the cup. This is what it's like in the inside. So now this ramekin goes into the freezer or the chiller. Let the butter set. Next, with the remaining flour, I'm just going to sift the flour. Putting this back inside. The oyster souffle is going to be a little bit different. So I'm just going to give the oysters a rough chop so that it becomes a little bit lighter. All right, around this much to do. I'm going to dice one shallot. So for the next step, I'm going to start with maybe approximately 10 grams of butter. This should do. About 5 grams of garlic. Thyme leaf. Shallot. My chopped oysters. White pepper. Salt. And that's it. So I have one separated egg yolk right here. I'm just going to put the hot mixture inside here and give it a whisk. Whisk it really, really fast. The flour mixture that I had just now, I'm just going to add maybe half of it inside here. So I'm going to have like a slightly thicker paste. This consistency is nice. I have an egg white out from the egg yolk just now. I'm just going to whisk it. This one, right? So this is pretty much done. Right now, I'm going to put my remaining flour inside here. Dust it as many areas as possible. And then I'm going to put in my egg whites. Egg whites goes in. So I'm just going to fold the egg whites inside. And try to get this mixture into a fluffy, smooth mixture. And there you have it. The souffle mix is ready. And remember our ramekin just now, which has the flour and the butter inside? It's frozen, solid right now, and I'm just going to pour the mixture inside. And this goes into the oven for about, I'd say, hmm, 200 Celsius for about 15 minutes. In it goes. I'm going to start making my oyster gratin. On a pan, I'm going to start with some butter. A dash of roasted garlic. Thyme leaf. Flour. We're going to make a roux out of this. A dash of milk. And then we're going to make the milk become thick. I'm going to put some white pepper on this. Next, I have an oven proof pan. I'm going to put this inside. Through my pan, I'm putting my sauce right on top. Next, I'll be grating a lot of cheese on top of this. So this is actually the oyster gratin here. It is actually ready for the oven. Once you put it into the oven, let it roast inside there until the gratin is out and it'll be ready for serving. So now that the souffle is almost ready, I'm going to put this gratin inside the oven. Ooh, hot, 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 hot. After the cheese is melted, everything will be ready for serving. So now let's take this off from the oven. Ooh, hot, 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 hot!
Okay, job well done. The dish looks somewhat a little bit appetizing today, but because my camera skills are too slow, I can see that my souffle, just now it was like on top of the cup and now it's like below the cup. Well, this is what happens when you let the cake cool out a bit. So, the first thing I'm going to try today is going to be this, the souffle. Let's see what it looks like. It's like a hot cake in the inside and wow. Okay, the whole thing can come out. <laughs> All right. Whew. You can smell a really, really strong oyster flavor coming out from this. Let's see. Wow. The oyster is like everywhere in the inside. Some is top, some is bottom, but at the top of there's really no oysters and oh well, whatever. Let's see what it tastes like. Mmm, tastes like a typical cake. Cake, but it's not sweet. And there's like oyster flavor all around it. Alright, actually the truth is about this souffle, it's actually called an omelette souffle. So in a way, it's actually almost the same thing as our typical oyster omelette. But it really has like a texture of a cake. But if you ask me, what would I rather eat? I'm gonna say I'd rather eat our Hawker Center's oyster omelette. Alright, next. These two things actually has one of my most favorite things inside there. So... I think I'm going to eat the chawamushi first, okay? So I brought my ponzu sauce around today. So I'm going to put my ponzu sauce on top of the... Right, so now, okay, you can see that the egg is actually like so fluffy. Like shaky, 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 shaky. How am I going to put it? Boing, boing, boing. Okay, got it. Let's eat it. Wow, the egg really have the flavor of the oysters. The oysters that I put it really at the bottom of the egg just now, it covers up everywhere. Every part of this egg actually has this oyster flavor on it. Mm. Wow, sweet and delicious. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna try it with my favorite mushroom. <sighs> Whoa. Oh, this is delicious. I can really suggest oyster chawamushi to be sold in Japanese restaurants, really. Well, the steamed tiger prawns. <sighs> oh, so satisfying. Let's see what the oyster actually tastes like with the eggs. I mean, the eggs already have the oyster flavor, but we never taste the real deal yet. The oyster is quite good. The oyster is really soft and springy. It breaks in your mouth. The oyster is nice and hot, but I feel that the oyster flavor is actually became a little bit too pale. I mean, it still tastes like oyster, but it doesn't have much of a flavor anymore. Overall, it's fantastic, really. All right, I really like the shower machine. The eggs is so smooth. It has a lot of oyster flavor. Oh well, moving on to the next dish. Gratin, yeah. Okay, you can actually smell a really, really good smell coming out from this. But, smell is one thing, taste is another. Right, the first thing we're going to have to do is to dig in and see what kind of gooey flavor comes out from it. Oh, it's so watery in the inside. You can see this thing has a lot of oyster flavor. Mmm, nice smell. Let's see what it tastes like. It has a really, really rich, gooey, and really nice oyster flavor. It's filled with oysters. You can see this. Here we go. Let's take another bite of this. Mm. Well, this dish is technically just something like a pie. It's basically another version of cheese baked oyster. Instead of having a shell at the bottom, you actually have a plate at the bottom. I really enjoy cheese baked oysters as much as this and overall if you ask me, hmm, is this really good to me? Well, yeah, it's kind of good. Presentation is good. The oysters, it really melts in your mouth and it's like, mm, ah, fantastic. I think this is better than the chawamushi to be honest. So now that I've tasted every single one of this dish, as always, I'm going to give all the dishes a rating. Personally, I think this is acceptable, it's nice, but it's not like I'll eat it again and again and again. It's just nice and acceptable, that's all. And the chawamushi, well, it's really nice and smooth in the inside. Ah, let's see. 
Alright, I'm gonna give my ratings right now as always. Alright, the gratin is definitely the best. Alright, and the chawamushi is also quite good as well. It's almost at the same level as the gratin, but I would rather eat the gratin first. But uh, the chawamushi is considerably quite good. Okay, you can feel so much seafood stock inside. The prawn flavor, the oyster flavor, all inside there. Wow, it's fantastic. So, dish number one, dish number two, dish number three. This dish that I make is the first dish that I make on the year 2021. Alright, I hope that this year will end up becoming a really really good year unlike 2020. But oh well. And I'm going to have to say this. I'm going to end my review now while finish this meal. <laughs> Whew, I'm done eating. And on today's episode, we actually had oyster meat as the review subject. I do have to comment something about the oyster. Some of the pieces of oyster actually has this like muddy parts inside the oyster. I think the fisherman actually didn't really clean the oysters properly before freezing it. As I eat finish all the dishes, I actually kind of felt that, well, the oysters are like, well, you can say it's satisfying, really. So the chow mushi is actually really, really nice. It's really nice, smooth and fluffy in the inside. I would go to a restaurant and eat something which is like this over and over again. But the best dish I can say is going to be the oyster gratin. It's actually really, really nice. So if you actually got your hands on this product, make sure to wash the oysters really really nicely because the sun pieces of the oyster has actually this black colored goo inside there. If you actually know what this black goo actually is, leave a comment in the description below and let me know about it. That's all I can say about the oyster meat that we actually presented in this video today. If you like this video so much, like, comment or subscribe. And again, this is to a new year of 2021. Let's hope for a better future. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.